science, music, literature, drama, the whole culture, particularly the religion of all the people of Asia can be traced directly to the Africans of Asia. India, Japan, China, just to name a few, the world owes a debt to the Africans of Asia. Your ancestors never intended to let you down. In this book, called The Gods of Northern Buddhism, we find a name, the Asian name of the supreme deity of the universe. His name is Sambo. They say when nothing else was, Sambo was. The name of the god of the universe to the people of Asia. And there are many places that carry this name. This is a depiction of Sambo. This is not an African statue, this is from Asia. And many places in Asia are called Sambo Judasia, the land of the descendants of Sambo. Various spellings of the word and the name Sambo can be found throughout Asia. Negas, the divine people of Buddhism. This is a second century depiction of Gautama the Buddha being given his first bath by the divine people of Buddhism called Negas, a tribe in Asia called Negus, the divine people of all the people of Asia, symbolized throughout Asia by the serpent or the dragon. That is their symbol. The Nega means serpent or dragon, the snake found at the entrance of every temple. The Nega on the roads, on the hills, in the caves, the symbol of the Asiatic black man, the tribe called the Negus, the divine people. In order to confirm what these people look like, you have to go to the archaeological finds from Davarati, a French uh, archaeological research finding confirming the original inhabitants. There's no depictions uh, preceding these of the original inhabitants of Southeast Asia. The people, the descendants of Sambo, the Asiatic black man. The seven serpents or seven rays or the negas surrounding his head represent the cosmic forces that afford him protection. He is a divine representation of cosmic forces, and those seven serpents represent his divine mission. He does not come of his own. He's a manifestation of the cosmos. The serpents, or the nega, represent cosmic forces, which is at his command, which represent him as a divinity. He is the manifestation of the universe. That is the symbol of those serpents you see surrounding his head. In essence, the seven serpents are cosmological, dealing with astrology. It's astrological representations of those forces of the cosmos that he represents. He is a universal monarch, a universal king, which he manifests and he shows evidence of. The black man of Asia the original inhabitants of Asia. According to anthropologists, the first, at first, the Negrito race entered India, and then the Austrics, and the last, the Mongoloids. These three races may be called the original inhabitants of India, and they are living now in the hills. So you see, the Negritos, the Australoids, and then the Mongoloids are the original. Again, it says, after the above races, Alpines, Aryans, Scythians, Afghans, and other races entered India. So they were never there in the first place. They came afterwards. As you read further, you read Dr. Hutton has pointed out the signs of Negritos among the Angami Nagas. Supporting this view of Dr. Hutton, many scholars say the Angami Nagas are the descendants of the Negrito race, and of course, they were mixed with the Mongolian tribes afterwards. So you see, the original Nagas were Negritos. They were Negritos, Africans. Here again, in this book, Asian Indian History and Civilization, it says the Negroid or Negrito people prehistoric India were the first human inhabitants. Again, it says the Negritos were supplemented by later immigrants, the Proto-Australoids. Another black race, another part of the black race, another part of Africans. As you read again, and it says here again, traces of the Negrito have been found in the Nagas of Assam. So you see the original Nagas were Negritos. 
Africans. And again, we read the proto astroloid type underwent transformation owing to, to admixture with the other people. The Negritos and the Astroloids. As a result, we have the Kol and the Munda type and the Mon Kamur type. Drop an, ex drop an exclusive phone.
And here, you see the Buddha, the woolly-headed Buddha, the crown of a queen. The image of God is the supreme Im image of the land. See, the thing is this, man. You always go to the, to the God because the God is the supreme image of the land. And you see, all of the Buddhas are woolly-headed. All of them. He's the deity. Nigga, get out of here. So you can see right there the, the little short locks that they wear. And here you see you see Sheba, a black god over there in the, in, in the subcontinent of India. And now you seeing all this garbage where they trying to rape even the black god of ancient, ancient India. So this is Buddha, nigga. You go to the deity. You see right there that is woolly hair. It's woolly hair all over the world. The original black man with woolly hair with the dominant man. Niggas, the divine people of Buddhism. This is a second century depiction of Gautama the Buddha being given his first bath by the divine people of Buddhism called Niggas, a tribe in Asia called Niggas. The divine people of all the people of Asia symbolized throughout Asia by the serpent or the dragon. That is their symbol. The Nega means serpent or dragon, the snake. It's a sign of never dying and it's used throughout the planet Earth, North, South America, Egypt, Asia, Africa, throughout the world. It's the symbol of life after death, the nega, the serpent. In all ancient cultures, in all ancient religions, the serpent is the symbol, the nega, the symbol of divinity. Okay, the Nagas, the Nagas, this is the Nagas. That's right. Now this is the one of the Kimi, mm -hmm. with the, the snake body, and the human head. Okay? That's where it comes from. So you got you got different uh, deviations, but the one in the Nile is the oldest. I'm just showing you the comparative study so you can see it. So the Nagla again is nothing but a representation of neck bet. Here you see another suitor with neck bet. The god the, the, the cobra goddess above his head, where the Nagla came from up out of West Asia. Nekbet is not a Naga now, nah, but that is where the Naga came from. As it went into Asia, it took on its own characteristic, but in the Nile Valley, it is a representation of the great goddess Nekbet. You dig? dig. Buddha is, and Krishna are only representations of the great black god Asa. Here you see the, the Nagas of India, who paint themselves up as black, as a remembrance of the great god Asa. Before there was the Nagas, you got to see that this knowledge came up out of the Nile Valley. The Nagas is a representation of Nekbet, which is the Koba goddess that is upon the black Sutan's headdress to let you know that they are protected by that African woman. Here you're looking at uh, the representation of the Africans on the wall. Pay close attention to that red dye. That red dye that even the Africans use back home on the continent. Here it is. They use the same red dye in Africa that they use in India. India. What you're looking at is the nappy-headed Buddhas that were nothing more than the representations of the black god a saw that had went into India and raised up the Indian, the black Indians over in that realm. And they put the woolly hair on his head, the thick and the broad nose, to give you the recognition of the African that was in that realm long before what you see the straight hair Indian of today. Here you see Buddha painted green, just like a saw sometimes is painted green to represent the vegetation, the life force that comes up out of the black earth. 